everyone, this is Cindy with the RainbowElephant.com blog and I'm here to share some more patterns with you that came from this little practice sheet that I did. So let's get started with tear draylops. We're going to do a couple parallel lines to put this pattern inside of and then I want you to mark some guide dots. And notice how these dots are spaced here in this example. They're kind of every other one on the top and on the bottom. Once you get your little guide dots drawn, you're going to make a teardrop shape and use the dots as your guide. You'll come up from one side and go down back to the original dot and then make a second teardrop shape right nested right up next to that one. And then we're going to do that all the way across this this band of space we have inside these parallel bars. And it doesn't really matter if you start at the top or at the bottom because once you get it done all going one way, you're going to turn around and go the other way. So we're going to start at the top now and work down to the bottom guideline and back up again. And then put a second one right next to it so that we have the same shape just going in the opposite direction. And you can see these little guide dots are actually going to kind of disappear as you do this because you'll draw right over them. And this is the shape you get. Once you get that in place, we're going to put this little dollop up here on the top. It's just a crescent moon between each of the shapes. And of course, we're going to repeat that down on the bottom part as well. And then once these are all in place on both the top and the bottom, we're going to split this up as if it was a piece of pie. So we're going to put a line down the middle and then slice two pieces of our pie on the left side and slice two pieces of pie on the right. We'll do this for each of these little dollops on the top and on the bottom too. And that's the end of our pattern. So from this point, you would just fill it in using colors or additional shading, shadows. Um, you could put additional patterns inside each of these little shapes. And here it is on a sample piece that I drew the other day. Running across the top there. Okay, let's look at BB Navels. Uh, you've probably seen patterns that look similar to this before. Um, this one's just slightly different than some of the others. We're going to draw a baseline and then some mounds on top of it. And notice that these mounds are kind of uh, somewhat tall and fat, chunky mounds, and there's a space between each of them. And then underneath each of the larger mounds, we're going to do a flat mound shape. And you can do as many rows as you want on these. They're spaced uh, every other. So one on the next row, each of your pieces will kind of rest on the mounds below it. Remember that bottom loop is flat. The top one is taller. Once you get all those in place, however many rows you want to, put a circle inside each of them. That's the little navel. And then inside each of the shallow mounds, uh, we're going to do some stripes going up and down. Once that's all in place, I want you to go to the very top row of however many you made and add an aura, which is simply a line that outlines what you've already put in place. And then go ahead and fill in that area with stripes as well so that uh, you have a completed pattern. Now I like to go back to that aura and add a little bit of extra thickness to the line. And this one too looks uh, very nice when you add a 3D touch to it. So to do that you would take your lighter color pencil or pen, marker, whatever it is you're using to do your shadows and um, go around each of the mounds and once you get each of those 
accomplished, let's say you're using graphite as an example, once you get that done, you're going to want to go back and soften that line. Like this. Okay, so let's go over to Fing Rays now. This has turned out to be one of my favorite patterns. So we'll do a baseline of some sort, and then we're going to go in and we're going to make these really tall curved lines, all curved in the same direction. And to me, it looks like um, eyelashes, really far apart. <laughs> and we're going to go back to those, and we're going to close them up. We're going to do that by making a line that goes swerves out and then back in go out and then in go out and then in all right and then in between each of those we're going to do a hollow s simply by drawing an s and then a line directly next to it in the same shape and that will make it look like a hollow s and we'll do this between each of these uh, shapes that we just created a moment ago. And when we've completed that, we're going to go back and in between all of the shapes we've made, we're going to do a tall curved line. It stands a little taller than the other two shapes. Then when we're finished with that, we're going to go inside each of those uh, first shapes that we made and we're going to do a, uh, a shape inside there that just mimics the outside of it. And then we're going to color it in. You could color it in solid, you could make stripes inside it, you could do whatever you want to. But this is just like a hollow inside this. And that's all there is to it. Isn't that a pretty pattern? I like that one. So here I've used uh, Fing Ray as well as BB Navels in a sampler for you. And you can pick up all three of these pattern sheets, just like the others that we did this week, over on my blog at therainbowelephant.com. I hope to see you over there.